I'm not really sure exactly why he saved me, but I do know that he gave me uh, my life back to warn the people uh, that, you know, and tell them that there really is life after death and it's really good to get your spiritual life in good order. So tell me about the accident. You were walking, you were driving? Well, it all go starts back before that. Actually, it goes clean back to uh, 2005 when I quit drinking. And in 2008, somebody said, uh, you know, John, you should go to AA. Uh, a lot of people get a lot of good out of that. And I said, well, I, you know, I didn't have a problem quitting drinking. I just quit. And, uh, but I thought about it, so I went to AA, and they were talking about uh, working a program uh, which actually is a very good idea. And they talked about having a higher power. Well, and they said your higher power could be whatever you wanted it to be. If you wanted it to be a tree, it could be a tree, you know, or, or it could be a friend or whatever. So if I had to have a higher power, I wanted the highest power. Uh, I wanted the real higher power. And, but I also was looking for some truth uh, to see if, if he was real. And so what I did unknowingly, uh, what I was asking for was I starting, started praying and asking the Lord for just a teeny tiny glimpse of the holiness of His holiness. Because I just had a hard time imagining somebody being that holy and righteous. And, uh, and I didn't ask for it once. I asked for that every day for three, four months. I'm not sure exactly how long. But uh, one night after AA, uh, I went out, went to get in my pickup, and put the key in the door, and she swerved over and and hit me at 35 miles an hour. Now what I am told is is that I went up in the air, and then she came back underneath me, and when I came down, I came down on her hood, and then I bounced up and hit her windshield and broke it. Then I did cartwheels off the back of the, the, the automobile. It was uh, an 89, no, a 90, 98 uh, Cadillac Eldorado is what she hit me with. And uh, it was 85 feet from point of impact to where she left me in the ditch. And the lady that seen it called 911, told them where I was at and jumped in her car and took off after her and followed her out to the town pump out here on Dewey Boulevard. That's where they caught up to her. That was her fifth DUI. And uh, I don't remember anything past there until I woke up in the hospital 28 days later in uh, St. Patrick's Hospital. Uh, but during that time, well, let's see, I was on life support for 14 days because I wouldn't breathe on my own and stuff. And they put me on life support to see if I would come around and come out of it. And thankfully I did, but I was really, I couldn't hardly move when I woke up. But the first thing I remember when I woke up was a nurse said, oh, you're awake. And I said, well, I prefer to be outside on the ledge with the birds because it was on the fifth floor, but the birds were down about the first floor or the second floor, somewhere in there. And she said, well, there's no ledge out here and there's no birds. And I said, well, you better look out the window. 
So she went over and she looked out the window and, and she was leaning over and she started to say, there's no ledge out here. And she said, there's no, and then she stopped. And she says, oh, there is a ledge down there and there are birds landing on it. Then she turned around and just gave me this horrified look because she knew that I hadn't opened my eyes in 28 days and she ran out of the room. Well, I closed my eyes uh, with the hope that I would go back out on the ledge with the birds because that's the first place I went when I left my body. Uh, I was outside the hospital and it's really different. Uh, I can't say it's strange, but it's different being in your spiritual body because if you're in your physical body and you want to go sit down, you know, you think to yourself, I'm going to go sit down, you know, or you, you know, that thought enters your mind and you have to walk over and sit down. Well, in the spiritual body, the thought enters your mind. You just automatically go and sit down. Your body just moves. You don't have to walk anywhere. And I went and sat down with the birds and a bird landed like right here next to me and walked right through both of my legs. And it was at that point that I noticed something was coming and then something else was coming and something else was coming. And when these three, I call them angels because I don't know what else to call them. When these three angels got there, uh, they put their heads together and were having a conversation. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but when they were through with their conversation, they started to leave. So the one that went straight away from me, I started to follow. And it must have sensed that I was following it because it stopped, it turned around, and it said to me, you have to go back. And it turned and started going away from me again. And then as it got a little ways away, it turned back around and winked at me like that, and then turned around and left. But I didn't go back, I went down and sat with the birds. And then from there, I went into another sphere. It was, there was blue sky, but that's all there was. There was absolutely nothing out here. And a black man walked out and he was, you could tell he was a black man, but very beautiful. The angels that came were very beautiful. Um, and this black man walked up to me and said, you have to go back now. And then I left and I was back at the birds. And evidently I went back into my body because when I woke up there I was. But uh, that was the extent of my gallivanting around while they were trying to keep me alive in the hospital. And uh, that was the only thing that was on my mind when I woke up, was everything that I had seen, uh, being outside on the ledge. Um, and I knew then that I had gotten a glimpse of the holiness of His holiness and I knew it immediately. And uh, then it was just a long journey, three and a half, uh, two and a half more months, three and a half months total in the hospital until I could actually go home. And it broke more bones and did more damage than I can even imagine. It broke my back and my collarbone and this bone and that bone and but here I am today. And I immediately just started telling people that there really is life after death. And, uh, and it was real easy to bring up the conversation because I would go to Walmart and 
And the lady would say, and how are you today? I'd say, well, I haven't had a bad day in my life. Even the day I got run over by a drunk driver wasn't a bad day because not only did I get to see, but I got to talk to real angels. And I found out that there really is life after death. And that's how it would go on until I had uh, the brochures made up that I pass out. And I just pass out brochures everywhere I go because I think it's really important to let people know that there really is life after death and that it would do them well to have their spiritual life in good order uh, while they're here on earth. Because once you leave here, you can't get your spiritual life in good order. It is what it is. So it's good to, to you know, work on your spiritual life while you're here. And that's about the size of it. Can you describe the angels in more detail to me? I don't know what they look like. Well, you know, people ask me that, and the only way I can describe what an angel looks like is if you took a person's beauty, say your beauty, um, and enhanced it five million times, there you have it, because that's what they look like. They didn't have any wings, uh, but they were very beautiful. Even the black man was a very beautiful person. And uh, from his dialect, I would say that he was here back maybe in the slave days, because he had a, a just a real different dialect. But. Uh, but he was a very beautiful person. What was it like hanging out with the birds? Did you hear, could you hear the birds talking? Oh yeah, they were chirping and stuff, yep. And it was really amazing when the bird landed and walked right through both of my legs. It was just, you know, it was just, you know, because you don't see that kind of stuff. You know, here in our physical body, they wouldn't even land next to me. But you see, they didn't see me. I wasn't in my physical body, I was in my spiritual body that I didn't even realize that I had until then. But I realize it now. Well, just lead a good, honest life. Be good, help people when you can, and don't harm them. You know, and uh, accept the Lord. That's really important. Um, accepting the Lord and uh, because he did die on the cross for us. And uh, that's what I believe. That's what the Bible tells us, and I have no reason not to believe that. And if you actually look at it from, uh, uh, well, let's look at it from this point of view. If you didn't believe, and you died and found out that you were supposed to believe, you've lost everything. If you believe and you found out that you did the right thing, you have everything to gain. Because this life here on earth is just the beginning of a life to come.